so um, what we're looking at is really uh, trying to get uh, as much alternative data source as possible, given that uh, people are certainly looking at official government statistics. But we think that uh, alternative data sources such as GPS information tracking vehicle moving around or looking at satellite images information looking at uh, metallic content on the ground can give us a potentially different view. And what's been interesting is certainly that uh, what we are looking at is uh, there's certainly a significant slowdown in the second quarter. Uh, but we're certainly seeing quite a bit of stabilization coming into July and August. So I think uh, the sentiment certainly has been quite negative on China. But when you look at the fundamentals, uh, it's actually giving you a slightly different picture here. There's a short, shortfall in this, isn't there, though, Jeff? I mean, in terms of that you're measuring a, a, co a country's effectively economic growth, economic activity by things that you can see from the air, not necessarily things that you can see within a factory, which would be much more tech focused, correct? Absolutely. I think it's also um, got a timeliness to the overall data in the sense that uh, GDP forecast PMI uh, tend to be very much lagging. But uh, satellite image and the GPS information are certainly happening right now. So to a great extent, it's actually very much a now casting uh, type of information. Essentially, give you a sense of where the economy is right now as opposed to three months back. Uh, so from that perspective, this information can be potentially more timely and could be uh, better for predicting future stock prices. It's kind of like looking at an aerial photo of a parking lot at a big U.S. Mm -hmm. mall and concluding from that whether the, whether the business is good or not. So, so when, you, when you consider these kinds of non-traditional data collection points, what percentage of your overall analysis uh, is derived from those non-traditional data points, if you know what I'm saying there, as opposed to Absolutely. the more conventional ones? I think uh, we are, I mean, moving towards uh, an, uh, a sort of percentage that's actually higher and higher. But mm -hmm. uh, roughly speaking, you know, it's the 40, 50 percent of our data sources are actually coming from this kind of alternative data sources. And uh, every month, uh, the data we track is probably larger than the Library of Congress down in Washington, D.C. And uh, I took my daughters there, and it's a big place. Uh, so we're certainly <laughs> processing a lot of this, uh, uh, this kind of a larger set of information and uh, trying to see how is that different or similar uh, to some of the public available information that we have that, uh, you know, traditional economy uh, type of indicators. Do you think um, that... So we think it's, uh, it's... Well, sorry, Jeff, but do you think approaching research in this way will put any kind of pressure, will add any sort of impetus to the Chinese government to be more transparent in the reporting? I think uh, uh, China is certainly pushing more and more into this kind of big data um, uh, artificial intelligence. So I think a lot of this information they are also trying to track. And uh, the interesting thing here is really that when we look at satellite image, it's essentially looking at the metallic content on the ground. How much metal is moving around? If a new building is coming up, if it's uh, more trucks moving around. So the objective objectivity of this type of information, I think is something that uh, everybody in the world should actually embrace.